Three companies, disrupting what you know about marketing and branding. Welcome to M Squared. Good afternoon. We are here with the next episode of M Squared Podcast. We have uh, my co-host, Dan Ryan from hello. Advanced Media Group. Hello, hello. Anthony Rapp from PR Sijing. What's up, Lumi? What's up? And we have a very special guest, Irene Amago from ASAP Mortgage Club. Hello, hello everyone. Irene. Hello. All right. Are we doing a rap, a rant today? It's been a while. I got, a, I got an apropos rant that I didn't realize it was actually apropos until Dan pointed out that it made sense. Well, I guess it's time for Rap's Rant. And now, for today's Rap's Rant. I do miss it. Rap's Rant. So, it's been about a year now that I've been trying to sell my, my parents' house. My father passed away several years ago. My mother lives with me. And today, we finally closed on the house. It was very sentimental and relieving all at the same time. But what was annoying, and what my rant is, why in the real estate mortgage banking industry are we still sitting around a table like this, signing stacks of paper like this for three and a half hours when I could do anything I want, buy a car, buy a house, buy a boat, rent, lease. I could do anything I want by just pressing a button or signing with my finger. So that's a, that's a good question. What are we doing? Because you're just, in New York. Three hours, I mean. So. Three hours. New York, yeah. Watching the attorney say, sign this, sign this, sign this, sign this, sign this, sign this. Would you like water? Sign this, sign this, <laughs> sign this. And I, and I actually said to the attorney, I said, what are we doing? Did you realize you were signing the same document like five times? It's all a template. Yeah. yeah. With, it's with, all Respectfully different, it's, to yeah. your industry and lawyers, because everybody's our friend, you're all using a template, right? Because I watch them. They go like this. Nope. X. And they put A. That meant to, that means it's good. <laughs> what does that mean? That just, I, listen, I respect everyone in the industries. I have nothing against them, but in, especially we talk a lot about adapting on the show, right? right? COVID, people learned how to adapt. Digital, technology, this, that, the other thing. And yet I'm still sitting there with a woman who's got 500 trees in a binder, <laughs> passing out papers and pens like it's candy. And I mean, I wasted three hours of my day, literally three hours sitting there to sign paperwork that, how does Rocket Mortgage do it? Or how do those online companies do it? It's the same closing. If you're in New York, you have to sign all the documents. Um, there are some documents that you can sign like pre-closing to make the closing faster and quicker, but it's just so time consuming to have them sent to you. And then you, people don't understand, oh, let me sign these here and then these there. There are some documents that have to be signed in person. And I learned something. In New York. Wet ink. Yep. Wet ink. And I, what does that mean? Specific, uh, she said specific it to me like colors too. She was well, like, she goes like this, well, all the paperwork has to have wet ink on it. Like I'm a jerk. I'm like, well, I'm like what? But no, I mean, she goes, to, yeah, they to have to file point, this. To her point, for for it being in New York, we we bought the house for my parents in South Carolina. I did everything in the airport right. while they waited. I was mm -hmm. I was done in an hour. We found it, we liked it, we met with them. I literally did all the paperwork in an hour while I waited for the airport. Yeah, I, my That's dad my be. dad moved to Arizona. He did not even see the house. Uh, he did everything online. Looked, got his mortgage. They went, they handed him the keys, and he went his house. So in my all, rant is we're fairness, victims of justice. In all fairness to New York, because I'm, I'm a New Yorker, native, and I love New York, uh, some of that got us in trouble in 2005. People were selling houses they didn't own. There was foreclosures. People were selling houses that weren't even there. How about that one? So appraisers were being bought and what was going on. So in fairness, they want to see you physically. But then, and I won't say anyone's names. People were dead this, and they were buying houses. Oh wait, why? Well, I have a story about that. But, but were they voting? The yeah, woman, I think they are. I think they did, by the way. One, one of the attorneys at the table, and again, no names will be mentioned by anything, who was very stringent about what I was saying, this wet ink and all this stuff. <laughs> my parents have a tenant. And there was a document that he, the tenant, needed to sign. And I said, no one, no one showed me this. Well, we're going to have to hold money in escrow defense of it is is that these are the things you know for every good thing and every fast bit of technology there comes people that ruin it for everybody totally and unfortunately agree. that's what happens and well thank god otherwise mike would be out of business <laughs> yeah he saves me his, his whole business is predicated on people being idiots yeah that's, oh thank you because i it's not no, no 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 the it's people, not, you, it's not not the customer no, the people right. who are trying yeah. to break into your systems yeah. and, and they're good at it and yeah. they're good at it, and that's what they do all day every day right mike oh all day every day 
every second so, of every day they're trying. Let's reel this in before Mike gets to talk about himself. <laughs> so this podcast is it's it's about branding, marketing, making yourself unique in a market, especially in a small local community like this. Talk to us about how you started ASAP and really how you built your brand. Sure. So I started AS. I, I, right out of high school, I was an, um, a serial entrepreneur. I opened up multiple businesses, love that sold them. And I loved it. I went to uh, work for one company, GMAC, General Motors, in the finance division. And I put in so much. Mm -hmm. And that's when I think you know you're an entrepreneur. When you're putting in more than the managers and the owners and you really care genuinely about the brand or what you're doing. So I decided I'm just going to start opening businesses. And I went through tanning salon when I was 20 years old. I opened my first tanning salon. It was called Endless Summer. Nice. And then I opened a, another tanning salon, and then I went on to, I'm dating myself right now, private pay phones. Remember the pay phones wow. in the street? Vaguely. <laughs> Until people like me figure out how to get the call, yeah. and I would get the right. free calls. So, so what did you do? You leased pay phones, like ATMs? No, it, like exactly. when you place ATMs and so stuff So it was like that? really interesting. So it, it, the way that pay phones went into street corners and on businesses was... I would have a sales team that would go out and sell the locations. So we would go to the, you know, delis, the local delis and whatever storefronts we can, restaurants, and talk to them about putting in a payphone. They would get a commission of the money that was put in the payphone or the credit cards for long distance, and they would allow us to use their spot. We'd enter into a contract, and that would be considered a contract for us. And that was what added value to the company, right? The more contracts you had. Usually it was like a two- to five-year contract. We had a whole repair team. And like you said, Mike, for people that stuffed the phones, we had people going out to unstuff them. So once you sold the... Back then, New York Tell did not charge any different for a phone line like it went to your house or it right. went to a private pay phone. But so was the New York City pay phone that you were... That's what I'm saying. This is the most but interesting thing i But you were in a heard. New York City pay phone, picking it up, getting charged 25 cents a minute... But we were being billed as a regular phone bill that New York so Tell like had a So 30 bucks a month, 40 exactly. bucks a month. So Flat you were getting a quarter VIG on every... Uh, at least, at least. What yeah. a great, great thing so this is. So that was amazing, why right? Why is this gone? It's gone. Well, unbelievable. It's gone. Yeah, let me show you why. <laughs> but that's helpful. an unbelievable thing. Well, listen, it's like with water, right? We all know this, that Costco and all these places, they purify it. They pay the same water bill we do. Yep. They just put it in a bottle. So yep. they're paying whatever... I don't know what we pay for water, but whatever it is per gallon, however the city does it, they pay the same thing. Yep. It's not more or less expensive, and they just run it through a thing and, and they I, charge I us. Kind of, I'm a fan of tap water, but that's just me. Uh, but I yeah, tap. I'm, I'm a fan of tap water. Do but, you tap? But, so that's interesting, right? The the payphone, it was bit great, and, and I just sold it at the right time, right before private payphones came out. And and then I went on to a couple other things, and I, I was, I have a, I'm a very big people person. And I got my first mortgage. I was 19. It was a co-op. Then I bought a house, and... I used this one company and I started referring them a bunch of deals, right? And everyone I talk to needs a mortgage. I talk to anybody. I yeah. don't know if you're like that, but I can I talk to, I, I I talk talk to, to everybody. Mike I talk to everybody, <laughs> everybody, everywhere. And he approached me several times. Why don't you just do this? And I'm like, I, I just want to retire. I got to raise my kids. I had three kids under the age of five. Wow. And I liked it. And I said, let me learn about it. And long and behold, ASAP was born. And it was born out of my basement with three kids under the age of five taking conference calls like in the closet, right? That's where the best Mike, I'm happen. sure you've done that. Oh, I've done it. And Especially during COVID. That was in 2001. And a fun fact, the ASAP stands for my three kids, Alexis, Stephanie, and Peter. I was going to ask you because it, it, was, it was too simple to just mean as soon as possible. Yeah, because right? I'm not I that simple right. of a person, that. right? right. <laughs> so it's Alexis, Stephanie, and Peter. And it was actually born by my brother. We were at the dinner table. And he's like, what about ASP? And I'm like... It's not as catchy. And then he said, what about Alexis, Stephanie, and Peter? So it was great, and it has meaning. And that's, in, in response to your question, that's the foundation of the company is really a family company, right? It, it allowed me to be a mom. It allowed me to be a Girl Scout you know, mom. Um, I never missed my son's games. So I love it because it gave me so much opportunity, right, to be both and balance both. And it's kind of funny because that's where the company goes. It's all about entrenching ourselves in the community. Um, people love that they see me in the supermarket, and I'm like like a local celebrity. Hair thrown no hair <laughs> thrown up, you know, sweatpants on, and they're like, oh, Irene, you know. So we've closed over five thousand loans for our immediate area, and it's pretty cool because I know every one of them. Wow. And now we have um, 
what is it, 22 years later, eight office locations were licensed in eight states. We went through the mortgage meltdown, which, you know, that was- it Clearly in survived. 2005 flourished. to 2000. It started in like 06. You knew it was coming if you were in our market. Everybody was so shocked. I mean, you couldn't have not known. And, um, and I kind of knew this was going to happen too. We're in a little bit of a correction right yeah. now. And uh, Mike and I talked about it a lot before it happened. And we're coming out of it, hopefully. So it'll be two times, two On rounds. the record, when are we coming out? Because I'm looking to buy a house. Yeah. I can't afford it. Come uh, on, what do we got? I, I, <laughs> I can't I, afford seven points. I, I can't think, do it. I know. You're talking about rates? Rates. What uh, are we doing? I don't know. Rates, I feel like everybody's got to get over that. I mean, 6%, 7%, it's not that bad. Oh my you're God. living it. You're living in too long of a time in the three. We should never have had mortgage rates at 2%. I mean, that was crazy. So everybody got spoiled and got used to it. And I got to tell you, a lot of the people that bought houses in that, a lot of the um, first-time buyers, instead of, I don't know about you, but my first house was a fixer-upper. Remember those? Yeah. They don't have those anymore, by They the don't way. exist. They don't exist. At least not in Staten Island. No. They don't exist because at 2%, you could buy a triple the house. So that's what was happening. So now the brothers and sisters of the young adults that purchased those homes right. are now like, wait, so... I have to get this home now? Yeah. So it's an adjustment period, and it's taking a lot for people to digest. But you see people going out and buying, you know, very, very high-end cars, and their interest rate on and their car is 10% right now. Yeah. So. And the one thing my dad tells me, like, I was not I was born, I don't remember, like, his first house was, I think, 17%. Yeah, my father used to tell me stories, too. I think mine too. was 13, but so I don't I think know he was in, much. Sure. My father was in Mine 20s. was 13. I think like, my, my parents' first house was in their 20s. Yeah, 20s. But that's what I'm saying. Like, we can't... So that's why home ownership back in those days was really for people that had a stable, like, like really was a really high-achieving thing. Now it's just like everybody can own a home at the 2%. Right. So now it's going to be a little more challenging. And, and we definitely have had a shift in um, programs for affordable housing, which is great. It's, it's opening the, um, the gateway to them because the high rates are hard. So we're going to see adjustments. And, and I think that everybody's digested the rates. It's just inventory now. Who wants to sell with a rate at 2%? The swing, Where are you going? The swing's been going for a little while, though, because I remember the first apartment that I bought in Manhattan was 2009... So you got there. a great deal. So I got four percent. No, but you got a great deal on the buy too. Right. Right. One hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and prices were down then. Yeah. So I yeah, great. I was definitely in an apartment yeah. that I was Perfect. on Central Park West. I had no business. Of course there. you were, <laughs> with your lustrous hair gazing out your window. What are you talking about? I live next door to John Lennon's building. Of course you did. That's when you got. I have hair holes in my socks. Don't worry about it. But then that was it, they came from. I think the rates went from like fourteen percent at the time to four percent. And it was like, this is perfect. Like, you got to do it now. This is just the prices in Manhattan, too, in 2000, everywhere in, two, in, in New York in 2009. I mean, we had a, we had per, great prices. So, do you still own that? No, we sold it a okay. while We sold it a while ago. So, yeah, I mean, I think, I think right now what we're in is it's like a battle. It's like a battle between buyers and sellers. Rates go up, it should be a buyer's market. We haven't had a buyer's market in what, 15 years where buyers can negotiate. Think about it. When was the last time a buyer was able to negotiate and get fifty thousand off the price or twenty thousand off the price? It, 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 they're going a hundred thousand over asking. Yeah. So now is where we're starting to see buyers at least not paying over the asking price and at least being able to get a home inspection. These people were buying it, no home inspection, no appraisal, waiving everything, waiving every, all the their rights. They, this is an apple. They were almost giving them what the, is it? Yeah. This is an apple. Exactly. I'll so buy now 10, more. we're not. We're not where we're getting the prices are declining. We're just getting into a normal market where you can breathe and, and be able to not, you know, first time buyers, it's really scary. Wave your inspection, wave this, wave that. I was telling them, no, don't do, don't wave any of that. Like wait a while if that's the case. Don't put yourself in that predicament. So, and that's the interesting part of what you say, like what is the company based on? So I don't chase the dollar. Like the dollar means nothing to me. It's the relationships I make along the way. And to tell someone to go and waive all of their rights as a first time buyer wouldn't be responsible of me and anybody in my company. Like, it's just not what we do. I don't care. Like, we didn't make as much money as some of these mortgage companies did in that crazy busy time because we didn't f tell everybody what they wanted to hear. We told them what they needed to hear, you know, and that was the most important. 
My favorite thing is my Google review of the guy that gave me a Google review, five stars, because I talked him out of refinancing. Like, who does that? So how do you how do you take all this knowledge and industry knowledge and looking at stuff and forecasting, and then how do you take that into something that's marketable and brand it so that you're get, attracting new clients? Like, how do you attract new clients in, with, in such a tumultuous time? I think it's education. Educating the consumers and really, like, like it's a very, it's not easy. It's very tough because when you have a consumer hearing from another loan officer that they can get 3% rate right now or 4% even, or like, for instance, the other day, one of my loan officers approached me and they said, you know, this client, we're losing them. And I looked at the two fees worksheets, which is the costs of the mortgage, right? right? And the other loan officer didn't tell them that they needed um, title insurance for owners, owner's policy. Now, in the state of New York, you don't need that to get a mortgage. You don't need it to buy a house. But there's no attorney that's going to let you close without having owner's title insurance. So it's easy for them to leave that $2,500 fee off of that. And that's one of those at the end. Oh, by the way. But they can say very easily, oh, your attorney should have told you that. I'm not about that. Like, I'm very transparent. And if you lose someone, which we do, because they don't like the transparency, what happens is when they get to the closing and they see it, the disconnect, and they have to bring five or $10,000 extra to the closing, or they find out they're paying five points for that rate, they decide, oh, you know what? We're going to recommend ASAP. <laughs> so it comes full circle. Right. And I get to keep my my ethics and keep my be true to myself and, and my company reputation. So it's not only doing the right thing, but you are also are all on social media. I'm watching and seeing you put videos out. And I, I almost think it's almost very similar to like how I'm doing it. It's like it's that hard sell. But we I'm, grew up together. Yeah, there we go. It's the New York in us. <laughs> but the old, the... Um, you know, I'm telling people the same thing. If it's well, maybe not the right fit for you, here's what you should be doing. And then it's the educating, right? It's being on social media and not just trying to sell to them. You're trying to help them understand and educate them through a tough time or and understand what it is they have to do. And, that, and you're doing a great job with that. So are you, because you put out all these videos that really help, I'm sure, thousands of people to navigate these hackers and all these, you know, people that are trying to infiltrate um, personal identification and things like that. Well, I have a good team. You're doing your own. <laughs> You're in <laughs> yeah. your videos. I'm like, you guys figure yeah, it out. Yeah, I still... Well, we, we, we've thrown Matt in them, too. We've thrown Matt in the videos, um, and I've kind of been able to step a little bit aside from that. Now, how, do you enjoy doing it? Which ones of those videos, what platforms are you finding are working the best for you? So I offer them to all... My whole team can do videos. I think it's very important to get them out um, and make sure that you're doing something educational. And it can be fun facts, too. It doesn't always have to be education. Sometimes people like to connect with you on a personal level, too. So I feel like a good mix of everything, education, fun facts keeping them engaged and 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 making them feel like a lot of the followers that I have and a lot of the people that that know me sorry they um they've followed me from the beginning and it's almost like like I said with you like they almost grew up with ASAP right like I'm doing we're doing mortgages for people that we did their mortgage now we're doing their kids and their kids have kids well that's the beauty of your industry yeah. right there's only so specific industries like that that have that jewelry I feel like is one of those yeah. industries where, you know, if you bought your ring, then you saw, like, you I just used to have down. Vinny the jeweler. That's what I'm saying. Used right. to I come to like your you house. Have, you have that relationship. The same thing, same thing with, with lawyers. And yeah. So, so it's fun. It's fun to watch. Yeah, yeah. It's fun to watch. And we have those really loyal customers that, you know, we do a customer appreciation party. Like they're our main focus of business and, and where we put most of our effort into is, our past clients, because they're really they really drive our um, referral base. Now you started the episode by saying you're a chronic entrepreneur. Serial. Right? Serial. Same. Ironically, <laughs> it's, it's the, headlo- the headline chronic. of my Facebook profile. That's what it says. Serial <laughs> entrepreneur. That's why it's, yep. that's why it's funny. What's and next? All around nice guy. What's next? The O Show. Tell us about it. So I, I'm a motivational speaker, and I've been that for like as long as I can remember. I feel like turning your. So I didn't have a great childhood. And um, I faced a lot of challenges. And I found that as I was growing into myself, I realized that, like, a lot of those challenges, like, poor me back when they happened. and But they actually created somebody that's resilient and strong and, and, and can face the world looking at things from a different perspective. 
So I thought it was like important to let other people that are facing these challenges understand that, right? It's so important because when you're going through it, you can't help but think it's poor me. Right. But why is this happening to me? Um, I, I say recently, like, without having challenges in life, you're not really experiencing life. Correct. Because if you don't know what it's like to be hungry, you don't know what it's like to have a great meal. If you don't, like, you just get used to things in life without having those challenges. Like 2% mortgage rates. Exactly. Saying. Oh, my God, that's perfect. <laughs> So I feel like I, so I started motivational speaking and I did a lot of, um, on stage and, and to corporations and to high schools and COVID hit. And then we got crazy busy in the mortgage side. So I kind of put it on hold. I wanted to bring it back. Um, I really feel now more than ever, certain people need it. And I just didn't want to be one of those motivational speakers. Not that I have anything against them. I don't want to be somebody that tells you how to feel after you walk out of my my session. I don't want you, because you're not going to feel the same way as Mike or any of you. Like, you're all going to feel yourself. So I was thinking, and I'm like, how can I do, like, what will impact them? And then it came to me, like, show them the way. You know, like, so I put together this play. It's called The O Show. And it has small uh, opening scene that's very powerful, three small vignettes, which are just smaller scenes, and they have nothing tied together, even though mine has a little twist. But And then a closing scene where I'll come out. I'm not going to tell people what I, you know, what I do. I'm going to engage with the audience. But the, what it's, the whole idea of it is each generation choosing challenges that they're going through and bringing them to light for the audience to actually see what's going through a lot of the minds of our younger generation, high schoolers, millennials, adult moms, adult dads, like what we're dealing with. So in when, sometimes when you look at a situation, you can actually sit there and you won't admit it to anyone and say, oh, I, I do, admit nothing. I do that. You know, I do that. But it, it keeps your mind going. It gets your mind going and it gets your gut going. And you start to realize that, you know what, maybe I can look at things a little different. Maybe my perspective should be a little different in life. So I feel like by sharing my story, and being able to show them the way, hopefully people will leave that theater changing their perspective and looking at life a little differently and empowering them to be the best version of them. I know you just started this because you said that before we got on air, but is there a, a website yet for it? Is yes. there a place? Oh, there's oh, a so give us tickets all, are give on us sale. Everything. I mean, this is not, tickets go on sale tomorrow. Tomorrow we're launching it. Nobody really knows about it yet. Not only we, do we know about it, we have two, four, eight, Complimentary tickets because we're coming to see it. So, <laughs> why so, is it coming to? So yeah, it, I would love it. I would love it. So um, we we tickets go on sale. They're on sale actually now at the Paramount Theater. It's the Paramount Hudson Valley Theater dot com, and I've made them very reasonable. They're twenty five dollars. Any proceeds that we make, any of the net proceeds, will go to a local charity or the school district. That's awesome. And good I, for you. I hope that it goes around the whole country. But and that means a lot, <laughs> especially here. I mean, I know you're not you're not a Staten Islander, but but. Everything that's on the show and everything we talk about is all about community. So the fact that you're doing that and giving back, that's phenomenal. Oh, yeah. I think it's important. And and we're going to give t free tickets out to the high schoolers that I've spoken to so that they can see it and and maybe change their perspective and things like that. So it's it's hopefully going to be really cool. And as I was telling you um, before we got on, the a couple of the people that I spoke to that are in the theater industry. By the way, I am not a writer. I am not an actress. That's probably well, why it's phenomenal. According to my family, I might well. be an actress, but, <laughs> but um, really I'm dramatic, but no, I'm, I'm, and, and the important thing is, is like, I, 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 I talk to people that are in this industry and like, you're crazy. You can't just write a play. I'm like, why not? Yeah. Other, and, people, and, other people do it. And you said you wrote it in a month, right? I actually wrote it in three days. In three days. Three days. Three days, six bottles so of wine, five So the whole thing mimosas. was put together in about a month. And did you lock yourself in the house? No, no, I did it. I, I did it. Um, everything got done on this phone. Are you, are you going to be honest? Yeah. Did you use chat GPT? Nope. Well, I would have. He would have. Nope. Well, you can't. Playground. You can't because. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can't because. So, so did I use chat GPT for sponsor forms and things like that to perfect it? Yeah. Dude, I use it for any of... No, I, I wrote the whole screen script. In fact, I'm rewriting one of the things right now because I came up with something a little better to tie it all in. Um, I love that creativity side. I, I, I feel like once I get going... So, um, so yeah, it was all... Everything got put together. So, we have promotional items, um, you know, all of the posters, the videos, the 
the venue. So that's what I was starting to say. Everyone that's been in the industry, first of all, they said you can't write it. And I'm like, okay, now I'm going to go home and write it because right. that's what I do. Never say you Don't can't. Don't tell me I can't. Right. It me irritates can. me. So I did it. And then they said, you can't mm -hmm. do it in a venue with a thousand seats. Have you lost your mind? You're not going to get a thousand people. The most people you've gotten in a room is 200. Be on the safe side. Just get a room, get a, a venue that's 200, a small theater. Why do you always have to go big? And I said, oh, my God. Go like, big, go home. Mm -hmm. have, you, I, have you been to the Paramount? It's a gorgeous place. I have not. Gorgeous. Awesome. It's a really cool spot. We're all going to be there. When's the opening night? November 9th. November 9th. We'll be there. November 9th. I would love that. That Let's would make it. me very happy. So we anyway, I went state. with the bigger theater. We'll broadcast live from, we'll do a podcast live there. Michael, get a party. Opening I would night. love that. Opening night podcast. And go, wait, before, go back to the O. <laughs> Explain it. Because I love that. So the O was originated but with the, the premise of, and this, a friend of mine came up with it. No, just um, take all the credit. Shh. No, I don't We're going to edit that. that part. No, I don't do that. No, I'll give her credit. Um, Karen Mayo came up with it. So it's all about... Um, we were sitting down and she's like, oh, and then we just started, oh, and we kind of played off each other. And the play is about perception. So how many different ways can you say the word, oh, and have a different meaning, right? So if I insult you, what do you do? Oh, it's like a different tone. Right. But if I tell you, oh my God, <laughs> Mike, you look amazing today. Oh, no oh. one ever says that to me. Oh. Right, so there's so many different, or you drop something. Oh, you know, oh, so it's actually the letter O, like O H. O H. That's why I want to be clear. Okay. Yeah. You see a cute baby. <laughs> what do you do? Oh. oh. Unless it's Seinfeld's baby. <laughs> oh, the baby. <laughs> so, so that's where the 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 name came from. And and by the way, we have all no actors, no professional actors. It's all local talent, local community people that have never even acted before. Which so makes it more relatable. It's That's so fun. fun. It's Probably fun. We have, tickets. we have so right. much fun. We, we were on our second rehearsal. And it's funny because I'm the director, but I've never directed. Of course. How but, hard is it? But they told, and, and they told you, you can't director. direct. You right. never directed. Right. She's like. Executive director. Do you have that thing? Click. click. I don't have it yet. You want to buy me one? Buy me I'll one. Send you I would love that. Yes, I will. Yeah, like click, click, click. Yeah. You need I want a director's chair. Like a director's chair. No, the chair. whatever that's called. I don't know what that is. Yeah. I'll send you a Techie Geek branded director's chair. I would love that. Yeah. So, so it's, it's interesting because we're, it's unfolding and we're, and we're growing together. We just, we just picked out the um, logo. We have the logo, but we need like a, we want like um, a character logo, right? So we have all of us drawn. It's, it's in the process of being made. And something very symbolic for me when I grew up is a old Volkswagen van. Remember those? Wow. You probably know because you're... <laughs> He's know. the old <laughs> No, he keeps, he keeps blaming you. But, but the old Volkswagen van is wow, very she symbolic. Thought you were young. Good for no, you. No, because he keeps saying with the it's he has the pay hair. phones, he doesn't remember them. I vaguely remember them. He's, vaguely. From, he's from Chicago. They can have yeah, they're all pay phones. <laughs> so it's very symbolic for me. The the Volkswagen. Um years ago I I slept in a van with the my bus. parents. The bus. So no, right. I slept in a Volkswagen no, van. What they would call the bus, right? The square Volkswagen right, van. Right. Yep. Like buggy, right? right? So, um, so that was our home for like a week when we were looking for an apartment and didn't have one. And so it's very symbolic for me because it was a great time in there. Like, and, and that's one of my aha moments, by the way, um, where I go back and think about is I was in this van in a beach chair sleeping, right? And I didn't think as I, you do. And and my grandpa, my my the kids at school would be like, "You're sleeping in a van?" I'm like, "Yeah, why?" I, I didn't even didn't think, like process right. and. At, at that point, the next morning, um, this, you know, knock on the door of the van. And I'm like, it's like a front door. I'm like, who's it? <laughs> and it was a homeless person asking if we had coffee in the van. So right away, my brain went to, oh, wow. So, oh, see, yeah. oh, wow, he's worse off than we are. And he's happy-go-lucky. Right. So what do I got to complain about? So that's part of, like, that. Well, that's why he's successful, because that mental attitude wins at everything. Mm -hmm. Sports, life, relationships, yep. that attitude wins at anything. Yep, you can't because you can't be beaten. You're, you're in competition with yourself. Right. If there's yeah. no one out there, if you're not trying to beat anybody, you're not trying to take down someone else's building, you're trying to make your own, you can't lose. Well, that's interesting because I just had this conversation with another entrepreneur that, like, this other person that owns a mortgage company, oh, that, oh we want to we want to be like, we want to do what you do. Like, just be you. Because by trying to be another company, you're never going to get in my head. God right. knows that's not going to happen. 
But it, you know, in anyone's head, you can't be someone else. You have to be the best version of you. And your your creative juices and your creative, you know, mind is going to go. You're trying to do something that you're not wholeheartedly in. in it's not going to work. And they don't have to be successful by trying to take your clients also. That's a lot of people. A lot of people do that. Businesses look at other businesses oh. and they say, <laughs> oh, you know what we're going to do? This is what Techie Geek does. I'm going to do exactly this. I'm going to try and steal all of his clients. Rather than just say to yourself, there's plenty of people. But their heart and soul clients. are not in it. And if your heart and soul are not in what you're doing, plenty of people donate to charities. And then you see it. on. You'll never oh, like see what I do. You'll see it on the big check, you know, right. on the big... Like I've done during COVID, ASAP Mortgage partnered with a um, local charity, at the Galata House, and gave away like they gave away ten thousand meals. You never saw it once. Right. I, I don't do that. I love when you see on like on social media someone with the big check and it's like five hundred bucks. Yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> I just gave five thousand to that same company. But, I can go out there right. with a big, big check, check, but because no it's knows. all about. The optic that exactly. they want, and it's the opposite. But see, there is doing. a right way to do that, though, because I have this conversation with clients a lot. I think there is a place and a proper way to do it. So I think that even though you both don't obviously want the accolade, I think it's important that it's done in a tasteful way so that somehow the community knows, even if it's a a, a tab on your website that says community. We and do. Then you kind we of have list. that. But in other words... Charity is close to our heart. Well, you that's, need to just let people know. It's contagious, right? You want to yeah. be... People give, and and hopefully that spreads, and that's that's why you do it. That's why you should share it, even if it's not the most outward thing, the most PR related thing. It's not why you're doing it, but mm -hmm. if you do it and you do good things, other people will follow. Yep, hundred percent. And people will relate to the fact that if you did something for a foundation or an organization close to their heart, you'd be surprised. And I'm sure you know this because you've been in business a long time, but. A person on the other end who may not know you and may not know company B, if you did something to an organization near and dear to them, odds are good they're going to go with you. At least here on yeah, the island. That's yeah, how a lot of it, yeah, you know. Yeah, everybody, listen, we're entrenched in the community. I'm a, I'm a community person. And I'm all about, like, I just got asked to be on one of our partners um, on stage to talk to other partners about them. And they asked me, like, what is the number one reason you use us? And my answer to them was simple. It's like your genuinity, your love, your understanding of my business model and what I stand for and, and the fact that my reputation means everything to me. And we went on and on for that for like 10 minutes. And they said, you know, that's the most interesting thing because we've spoken to 10 other partners and their, you know, rates and, and products and more. In, and, and, and there's nothing wrong with that. But I didn't even think of that. Because it's more for me, the relationship they have and that the understanding that my clients are everything. Like ASAP mortgage clients mean everything to me. If, if you know, if whatever we have to do to, to make sure that they're comfortable and navigating that process is, is what's important to me. I, you know, we call them like our cherished assets. Yeah. We need them. And all we want to do is write by them, right? And I, I had a conversation yesterday. I had a, a client call me and he was upset. And I get on the phone, and he's like, you know, this is going on. I'm like, oh, this is the first I'm hearing of it. We'll have it taken care of in, you know, 20 minutes. And that's what the, that's what matters. Mike, and I'm not giving him a plug. Please right? don't. Please Mike don't. is hands down not only one of the nicest people I've met. This is true. But he, he really is. Yeah, he's got is a true. heart of gold. We break his chops all day. But no, he is kid, amazing. Kid. But I've known him now what, Mike? We've been using your company. About seven years, yeah, I think. Yeah, even maybe a little longer. And... There is not one thing. He works the same way I do. And we get along so well. And when the market started to turn, I called him up. I panicked. We bounce ideas off each other. He's, mm -hmm. he's not only a good human being, an amazing human being, but his business model is so exact to mine as far as the way he treats his, his customers, the, 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 way, the, the amount he puts in to not even his wanting back, just being able to say, I made this client happy. So I'm really, I got to give you. Well, I watched you do it. It worked for you. I had to no. follow somebody. <laughs> no. Now, here's the question. Did you enlist the services of Techie Geek before having a problem or after having a problem? No. Mike, I got Because that's old. something we usually, we usually Mike, talk about. Wait, somebody recommended you, get, you. Oh, yeah, I, I remember, yeah. I was, Some, I was wondering if you got the potato. Did you no, get the she, potato was already, she was already a client by that point. Uh, wait, I didn't get a potato? Post potato. Yeah, you were already a client. So you, you didn't send your old clients a potato? No, no, no. You want to go to potato? I'm so, the, no, I don't. Uh, <laughs> I'll mail you a potato tomorrow. So, so somebody introduced us. Chris Caggiano. Chris Caggiano. I was Grand president Oaks. of the New York Association of Mortgage yeah. Brokers. And Chris had mentioned 
my because I was looking. You were for, with another IT provider that you were not happy with at all. Well, the other IT provider who will we, remain nameless. Will remain I, don't remember, I don't remember. I do name. remember. We started out with knows. him so she small. Knows. She right? has to know. She knows everything. That person left. We, you know, went on, and then I got this other person that the price was right. You know, and the guy. Good. But it didn't. It didn't. It didn't do anything for me. I, I wasn't getting any value, so it doesn't matter what your price is if you're not getting the value. I have never, knock on wood, once had a virus, anything, anything. And we have a lot of technology that's involved with the mortgage business, and plus we have a lot of um, a lot of privacy, secure. Right. Exactly. You're talking sensitive about sensitive socials, information. I mean, that's and big the stuff. And the Department of Financial Services requires a lot of layers to protect that. That I don't even bat an eye. I give Mike the when I get an audit. I'm, I'm really serious. Three pages are for me. The rest are for Mike. I'm like, Mike, here, I pay you, I pay you for this. I have no idea what it means. Just make it go away. Yep. I'll leave it. I don't know what it means either. What's it mean? First he My- does the intro. <laughs> yep. Now he's getting a testimonial. <laughs> on this air. is great. This is a good episode. This is the greatest <laughs> thing you've done. This is the best, the best M squared there is. Yeah. I'm very genuine. So what I say is, is honest. Well, that's why and I was curious. Because a lot of times, no one enlists Tech Geek until it's too late. And we talk about that a lot. Yeah, no, and, it wasn't and too his late. His business that is, is unique. That is changing. You know, we're we're it's, it, we're seeing that more businesses are understanding. You got to do it before, but that's because the media right now. I well, mean, it's in your it's, face. It's in your face, and it's in your face that's rightfully slow. So because it's happening, right? And I feel like Mike sells what he really believes in, and he'll say to me, "Irene, you can't cut this because X, Y, Z." And I'm like, "Yeah, you're right." Right. And I and, and I hang up the phone. Like, and listen, I'll call him on private reasons. Private Fifteen thing. grand. Like I'll Sorry. say, Mike, I don't know. How do I open this thing? You know, like I'm so bad with tech, and he'll immediately help me. Does he'll he got do- you on bracket? Oh yes, yeah, on bracket. He's got me. You know what he's got bracket? me on? I'm going to tell you a little funny story that I just figured this out. Threads. We're going to talk about this later. He got you on threads. I'm on threads. All but he's got threads. he's got me on um, what number are you? I have no idea. <laughs> what, it tells you what number you oh, are. Oh yeah. I was yeah. probably like 38 million on your handle. I think I was like 50. So he um, tells you, now you made me forget what I was going to say. You were continuing we were talking to talk about, about how great Mike is. Oh, yeah. So Mike. See? See, I forget. So Mike, and in, in cahoots with my operations manager, they think I don't know. They have created, because I work at night, I, 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 2 o'clock in the morning, I'll send emails, just what I do. I've always done it. And somehow I have this feature now where unless I click it, it will earmark the email if it's after 5 p.m. to go out the next morning. Uh, I was an Outlook feature. <laughs> I, that, I, I, my, my text might have done that by... So I think in cahoots with Camille, my operations manager, let's give her a plug because she's been there from, since from day one. And Camille is so much better than Mike. Yeah, no, Camille is... It, and it, she works in sync with me. We fight. Two minutes later, we're talking. It's like, it's like a, a, a house... It's like a, a work wife for me. And um, she literally probably didn't want to get all my emails at night. And the clients get sense. the emails so, at night. And, and, and but now I've, I've noticed it, so I just keep clicking it yep. off. You send it anyway. I hit, I have to click off, and then I send right. it. Note to my text, disable the... the okay. <laughs> but no, but I, I do that too, because, you know, having two kids, younger kids now, six and three, I come to work, five o'clock hits. Look, I, ha- I leave work because I have to go home to my kids, but that doesn't mean my day's ending. And then... 11, 12 o'clock at night, I'm catching up on emails. And it's one of those things is, do you want your clients to see you emailing them at 12 a.m., the questioning, and, or is it to them seem weird that you're working in the middle of the night? Why is he working in the middle of the night? Why is 3 a.m.? Or is it better to have it like 8 a.m. Yeah, you're right. right you're right. Through? You're right. And, and that is funny. I just, I just talked, I just saw a thread that, a thread that said, um, it was a mortgage person and they were asking, I mean, this mortgage group, and they were saying how, is it crazy that they want to work nine to five and they don't want to work after hours? And it was kind of funny. All of the other responses to that were, that's great. Here's my number. <laughs> Just forward me your calls after hours. Yeah, right. <laughs> so so it's, it, is, it is very funny. And I had this talk in my sales meeting. Um, you have to have a live-work balance. My kids are older now. My son's 30. My daughters are in the 20s. Like... I've never had that because there were certain hours, like when it was bedtime or dinner time, that I wouldn't answer my phone, but I'd always go back and forth and check things. 
I've never had that where I shut down completely. And I don't feel like in a service business, I can do that. Right. My, I, I just don't feel that. Like if I want to own something where I shut the door at five, walk out, and nobody needs me. But when you're buying the biggest investment of a lifetime, and now you're going to, you're working all day. You can't talk about it during the day. You get home, there's an email that you're freaking out on, and I can answer it in two minutes. I, I don't see why to make you go through that when I can just quickly. My clients become our friends, right. yeah. you know, and I don't shut my friends out at that time. So, it, And they're very respectful of it. it. It is tough, though, because I'm the same way. IT is now, right? If you're having an issue now, I can't be like, hey, sorry, talk to you tomorrow. And I understand the me, and that's why I have the team I have. But it definitely adds issues with, like, at times with my wife. And I've had to learn how to deal oh. with that over years because we'd be in line in Disney World, and my phone's ringing, and she's I'm on the phone. And she's like, oh, we're back on the phone. I'm like, do you want me to go sell the business and start getting a nine-to-five job somewhere, or do you want to own a business and grow it? And well, it's, and are, it's that, I think you, it's a pick-and-choose battle. So, so there Nicole's, are times. Nicole's a saint, by the way. She, oh, I know. I love her. There are times where you do have to shut it off. Yeah. And that might have been one of them. I mean, probably. <laughs> but that was also many, many years ago where I didn't have the team I have now. Like, right. my test is in October this year, I'm going away for two weeks. I haven't gone away for two weeks. Now, I'm not going to I'm one call place. You every day. I, you can. I'll talk to you. Well, I'm going to a conference. I'm going to be speaking at for like the first four days. And I think I have to fly back from Miami here to the next day fly with the kids to or uh, Disney World. And so I'm like, I'm two weeks, and I'm like, well, I have the team now, so I guess it's time to do it. Yeah. I went to Europe. Uh, I went to uh, Spain. My son studied in Spain and Greece, and I went for 10 days. It was the best 10 days of my life because you have such a time difference that you can't. Like, it's, it's impossible. I mean, I did take two deals while I was there. Oh, only two. But, but, but it's a great um, disconnect, you know, because you can't be reached. It was right. almost like a, ah. Like, this is what it's like. Uh, like, <laughs> so, I'm up. Anybody could call me, but they're all sleeping. I'm like, oh, wait, you're sleeping? I tried call to call them. Like, I tried to call them. at like they working? It was like, 2 a.m., and I'm like, Camille, did you not want to try to call me? What's wrong with the phone? It's not working? I don't get it. So since this is Bloomfield's episode, what are you, what are you speaking at? Tell us about the conference. Like Dado. Dago Khan again, yeah. We had, we had him we here, remember? We, we had. We spoke about it. I'll give more details as we're close. I don't know the exact uh, session yet. I'm in negotiation for that. Make them pay for my whole trip. So oh, I love nice. It. Yeah. If well, you're gonna, you know, they 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 tend to pay for trips and stuff. But last year they swindled out because they're like, oh, you're coming from D.C. You don't need a flight. You don't need this. You don't. We'll pay for your hotel. And this year I'm like, no, no, no. So what about other news though? Do, any, well, any bestsellers in the room? I, oh, I, why we haven't had an episode since my fourth bestselling book. Oh, we just wanted to hear you say it again. Cyber attack prevention. Any, Wait, are you really any, on your fourth? Yes. Any but I am. You fourth. you released your book, but it was only you. God bless you. Any time. I, I wrote one chapter. Name? I am a co-author, oh, a co-author. Okay. of four books. Yeah. Okay. So, right, no one cares about you. Actually, no one cares about your book. But no, your, yeah, her book was great. Was I didn't know you first home buyers. It's We're talking so much about you. We have no idea. What inspirational guide to the mortgage and real estate process. So it really is. An, it it so raises the. It's an inspirational guide to the mortgage and real estate process. So it raises the bar for. All of the professionals in the industry, I feel like it does, to deliver the customer service that the consumer deserves because now we're making the consumer aware of it. You know how many clients are embarrassed to ask questions and then once they're told, oh, you don't understand that? I'm sorry, I thought you knew that already. They, they, go, into, in, like, they go inside and they don't ask any more questions. Ask everything you want because you're paying these people as the professionals to do their job. So it raises the bar for them, but it also makes sure that the consumers understand that if, you know, the whole idea of the book is put together a great team. Once you put together that team, trust them and be loyal just as much as you want them to be there for you. You know, you don't want somebody answering their phone at night and then all of a sudden because somebody gives you an eighth of a percent better on rate or because they're showing you a fees worksheet that may have a less of a, a little bit less of closing costs, you just bail ship and, and go to the other client so it's all about really respecting each other and choosing the people that you you never want to choose a mortgage professional based on rates unless you're locking in the rate at that time and even then people lock in rates but then you get denied then what does that mean it's as good as the paper it's written on so you really want to choose 
This is a, a, the, probably one of the largest investments of a lifetime. You want to go and trust it with the person that's giving you the best deal? Go right ahead and do that. But you better make sure that person's credentials are there to back it up. Because if they're not or their company isn't, that paper you have means nothing. And when you get to the closing and you have major surprises, newsflash, you can't walk out of the closing because your down payment's in jeopardy. So there's a lot riding on this. You can't just, you know, it, you, you're, 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 you're an adult. You're entering well, into an adult transaction. Hmm. And you really have to pick. So that's what the book is about. It's about picking your team and then navigating you through the entire, from start to finish. And it's not just for first-time buyers. It's for people on the sidelines that want to know how to create generational wealth and purchase investment properties. It's for people, single buyers. It's for FHA, for VA. There's a, a, a chapter in there for everyone, even single buyers, because people don't realize you can buy a property on your own. They think you need someone. So it's a whole, there's, there's tear outs on, you know, what to bring with you to the it's house. It's like mortgages for dummies. It's, it's, it's everything I involved. I need it. I, I and re, then I it takes twice. you all the way through to having your housewarming party, how to engage with your neighbors and things like that. So it really takes you through everything, and it's and it was written in two. It was released in, in COVID, two, right? No, I think it was released right after COVID. Oh, I think right. I don't remember. I was definitely I, I was definitely in this and building, so I moved in right before COVID. So, so it must have been before. Like, so it's on. Is it before COVID? Or it might have been. No, I'm saying it must have happened right, right after right. 2021. Mike writes so many best sales. He it forgets was, as um, well. He's not sure. It's on Amazon and Barnes and Noble. It's called Home at Last. Home at by Last by Irene Amato. And I was just, you know, ready to almost release my memoir. And um, my dear book writer passed away. Oh. We did the whole thing. We did our recordings. We had a standing Sunday night call. And he just passed away. And I miss him so much. He was just such an amazing human being. Sorry to hear it. So, yeah. I don't, so, in, so, so that's where this play was born. Because I'm like, all right, I don't have a memoir. I wanted to get my story out, so let me just figure out a way. And then I think he kind of channeled some energy through me. Yes. And together we wrote it. In three guys. So oh, <laughs> maybe playwright. Not, maybe it's not time for the book. So, playwright, author, entrepreneur, inspirational speaker, inspirational speaker. So talk. I mean, talk a little bit about because you mentioned work-life balance. So what right. are like some tips and tricks for anyone listening or watching as to how to go from sleeping in a Volkswagen, respectfully? To then, a playwright, an author, uh, owner of how many how many offices do you Eight have? Office you said? Locations. Eight office locations. Would you say five or fifty thousand deals? Five thousand. Sorry, okay, I don't know. I just want so five thousand mortgages closed. Like those are huge numbers. Those are huge achievements, and you sit there so modestly, but that's why you're able to do it. But how do you how do you impart some wisdom on people who are who are just coming up or people who are doing it now and might be doing it wrong. So what I think it's a through? double edged question. I think it's two questions. The first one would be for people that um want to be empowered of how I got to where I am from where I was, right? I think I said it before, I think it's really important to embrace the challenges that you go through in life. And I get it. Like nobody wants to go through hard times, but if you look at them as the hard times you're going through is creating a more resilient person and a, and a stronger human being on the other side that really helps you navigate through. And it teaches you lessons that you, can, you couldn't even pay for. Like you, even if you wanted to pay for them, you couldn't. So that I think is what got me to where I am now. All of those, like it just made me realize, like I've, I've had a lot of deaths. I lost my mom when, she was, when I was 18, my dad when I was three. So I've, I've been through a lot of losing people. And I think when you... When you're faced with that, there's some people go through their whole life and they, they never lose anyone. Yeah. So I think when you're faced with that, you you cherish life more, you understand that it's a gift, and you realize, like, hmm, why not reach for the stars and do whatever I want? Why not? Why can't I write a play? Yeah. Like, why can't I? And and that, I think, is the attitude that you have to have, right? So And then the second part of it is, how do I balance? I think when you love what you do, it's all balanced it's because you're doing, you. it's a part of you, you know, like, do you love being a mom? It's all, everything is part of it. You know, it's all just a, one big circle. So if you're, you know, they always say build a, a life that you, you don't need a vacation from. Right. right. I, I love, I love my life. You know, I really do. I, I, I if I don't want to go to work, I don't go to work. I mean, I'll pay for it the next day, but I don't want to work. You know, if I want to, 
go sit under a tree and write my book for two days, I do it. But then I just I just balance it. If I have to do that and go home at night and watch my show and check my emails the whole, that's what I do. So I feel like it's it's all about balance for people is all about, I really feel if you love what you do, you'll find that balance. But I think the one piece of advice that I will give is be respectful of your relationships. And that means if you may love what you do, but your spouse or your kids don't understand that passion you have for it. So sometimes it can translate into he's not or she's not hearing me. You know, so just be mindful of that and understand the times that you need to put your phone away. Whether you want to or not, it really means a lot to the person that you're with. So try to balance that part. That's the most important part. I don't think like people that love what they do have to balance it for us. I think it's more balancing it for the people that we love. Right. That's yeah. great advice. I mean, my wife never listens, just saying. <laughs> no, she does. She does. <laughs> my wife doesn't even know what I do for a living. And That's your a kids story, watch so. everything you do. Your kids watch everything you do. Okay. Every every move you make, your kids are watching, their eyes are bright and and they're looking. So it is important to give them that specific time. I mean, I'll tell you a funny story. One day I was going to my son's. It was a crazy market. It was 2005. And I was at his, my son was a soccer player. He was like a cool soccer, you know, the, the one that, whatever, I don't know. He was the champion there, right? So I was going to video his games. It was right, his last, one of his last couple of games. And I showed up at the field and I'm in my heels and my suit. And, you know, I'm trying to do everything and I'm videoing. And this mother... You know, the mom that, like, you know the mom. Uh -huh. You know them. <laughs> Every mom good. on the South Shore. Right? So she <laughs> taps me on the shoulder, and she says, I think you're at the wrong game. Oh, man. It's a so puncher right in the mouth. They all wear the same <laughs> uniforms, right? It's the same school. So I'm looking, and I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm, I'm videoing for a friend, because I'm like, shit. You could do that. Shit, I'm at the wrong game. Yeah. But I'm like, I'm not going to tell her that. Right. So I'm like, no, I'm videoing for a friend. Meanwhile, I'm like, oh, shit. With the field. So I'm like, I'm videoing for a friend. And I'm videoing and I'm like, when is she gonna leave? Because I gotta go. Right. So now I have to pack up and run all the way across town to the other field where my son was playing at. So that's a fun, <laughs> funny, funny thing. But you made it. I made it. That's all that matters. I made it. Watch them score the winning goal. So yeah. our kids have a podcast. Oh, <laughs> so, so they cool. are watching everything yeah, it's that great. we do. Yeah. They <laughs> My guy's too young. If he was a little older, he'd be well, in here doing it with you. Too. We gotta bring him as a guest. We'll bring him as a guest. Well, but my but kids that's, watch. That's my, interesting. My kids watch everything we I do, and they're my boss now. I got multiple bosses at home. Yesterday, I see that. Yesterday, I went to go get don't, uh, coffee. Like at the end of the day, and I apparently was gone too long. My I get I see my wife call and answer. It's my daughter. Where are you? <laughs> I'm like I'm at, I'm at Country Donuts. Which one did you go with? Because you've been gone for way too long. Like, <laughs> I ran into someone I know in the parking lot. I'll be home in two minutes. Thank you. We have a lot of bosses. Yeah. Well, my That's daughters great. have the, my location on. Wow. So they know where I am at all times. I said, why do I need that on? Right. You make us have it on. Oh. I'm like, okay, whatever. <laughs> Just keep it on. You know, whatever. So apparently even when they get older, they're still going to watch. Me. Oh, yeah. They're still, they're still watching. What do, you, what do you feel has worked best and what has worked I guess, not as good as far as marketing, whether it's retaining, like you said, nurturing the current relationships, because you said it's all about relationships, or what I would call the equivalent of cold calling, bringing in oh, new I, clients. We've, I've never well, I don't mean cold calling, yeah. but I'm saying, in other words, when you're out there marketing for new clients that you don't have that relationship with versus nurturing the clients you have to bring in their family and their friends. How do you approach That's those two targets? That's interesting, because a lot of my competitors, if they, you, know, you want to call that, um, do a lot of these Zillow leads and and uh, and buy leads and I've never done that in my life and I I I we tried it for a short period of time and it's like we're my entire company because we operate like a family. I didn't really talk about my team, but my team operates like a family. We only um, I I can pick who I bring in and I make sure that they fit in our company culture because I'm not going to have that one person tear down my entire company. Right. Um, you know. Camille's been with me for 22 years. Um, Matt's been with me for, you know, 15 of them. Um, Here's Elvia, the shout out to Matt. Joe, shout right out to you. Matt. See? Guy in the corner. Yep. Executive producer of the O Show. Executive producer of the O Show. <laughs> so, so, and, and driver. 
every one of my employees, they've all been, and I call them my teammates, they've all been with me for long periods of time. So shout out to them. But I do feel like it's not what we do. Like we don't cold call. We, because I feel like the people that you're cold calling to, it's a certain clientele and they're used to it. And, and how do you call someone when you're being transparent? So this is very important. When you're being transparent in my industry and you're telling people the truth, you can't cold call them because anyone cold calling them is lying. I agree with you. They're telling them they're getting right. this percent. So now you're cold. Here you are trying to be genuine and you're going up against people that are lying. You can't do it. You can't do it because everyone that's picking up that phone, again, it, the most important thing, if you don't have a property and you are not in contract and you don't have, even if you are, there's, there's reasons I'll tell you not to, but if you don't have a property and you're not in contract, don't bother shopping rates. Because anyone's going to tell you what you want to hear. The rates are based on income, debt to income ratio, property type, loan to value, t the, the, the type of prop, everything. So until someone has that full profile of you and you have a specific property and you can lock in the interest rate, because interest rates are locked for a period of time, nobody's going to tell you whatever you want to hear. For me, we just say this, we actually qualify clients and we'll tell them a quarter of a percent higher to protect them that if the market shifts and the rates go up, because they go up and down every day, yep. that at least they're not shell-shocked and say, oh my God, I can't afford this house anymore. I don't want that payment. We tell them qualify a quarter higher. You know what? And that's not easy to have someone trust you when you're going out a quarter of a percent higher yep. than anyone else to say, I'm looking out for your best interest. Try that one. So how, so right now we all know rates are crazy. The market's not what it used to be. And I'm not going to say it's a tough time for the industry. As an outsider, I think it is, but I may not be. But what are you doing now to, to bring in new clients or, or get your brand and your name in the conversations, even though the times are difficult and it seems like it's not flowing as freely as it once was? It's interesting. Right now, so we do a lot of, like, you know, the local teams, the, the baseball teams. This, you know, we put our banners up. Right. We, we put money into that. You know, some people put money into taking realtors out, really true professional realtors. You know, they want someone that's going to get the deal done that they can hang their relationship hat on. Right. So they, you know, when they recommend... It's about making them look good. Exactly. Yeah. And a lot of realtors recommend us. And when they recommend us, they know the client is saying, oh my God, that was great recommendation. Thank you. That's the key. Because if you're in this long term and you start giving it to the person that's taking you out for drinks every night, that's not going to work very well for you. Right? So Is we, that why you've been taking me out for drinks every <laughs> night, Mike? We put it into community things, right? And it's interesting because on the way over, I said to Matt, I said... Um, guy in the corner. Guy in the corner. I said, you know, it's, my phone doesn't stop ringing. And I said, you know, the funny thing is, is it's so heartwarming to, like, get all these calls without even trying. Like, it's, it's, we've reached a place where people really trust us. And the word gets around. And he said, oh, I forgot to tell you, it's interesting. One of my accepted offers got the deal. The realtor called and said they got the deal because of the company name, because of our pre-approval. Wow. So that, 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 that really it's just huge. is huge. Yeah. So, Mike, recap. What do we always talk about? So we always talk about the community. So it sounds like even uh, Bronx, upstate New York. We call you upstate, by the way. Uh, Are you upstate New York? No. I know. Camille gets mad at me. No, we're like, Westchester County. We're right in the middle no, of it all. Up, that's upstate. <laughs> no, we're not. <laughs> Next to my head. Camille always yells at me because I'm like, how's it doing upstate? And she's like, you know we're not upstate. I'm like, you're upstate. <laughs> like saying Noodle Plain is up. By the way, Camille wanted to come, but I told her last minute. Oh. Um, she why didn't you give me advance notice? I uh, would love that. We got to bring her next time. Yeah. Um, but we talk about community, so no difference, right? Yeah. Westchester County, community, you're doing exactly that. We talk about relationship building, and it's no different. And that, it's, it's, we, we keep seeing this over and over, whether we're talking to you and, and selling mortgages and, and having eight locations versus, you know, the guy who owns a restaurant. It's the same thing that we keep hearing on this podcast. Well, it's not the same thing all over. It's who you're surrounding yourself with. That could definitely be it. Well, we appreciate that. But listen, Irene, you are a walking marketer. You're a great, a great guest on this show. We really appreciate Thank what you. you're doing and just listening to you. It's been, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. So 
I'm Dan Ryan from the Staten Island Media Group. With me always, Mike Bloomfield from Techie Geek, Anthony Rapp, PR Cision. Before we leave, give us your handles where we find out more info. Irene Amato on Instagram. Irene Amato, ASAP Mortgage on Instagram. And Irene Amato on everywhere else. YouTube. Uh, the- What's your thread? Irene Amato. I think it's Irene Amato 347. I could be wrong, but... You'll see. You'll you'll find me. So follow Irene and don't forget to follow at M Squared Podcast on all our channels. Like, subscribe, and smash that button below. And that's a wrap. <laughs>